Thanks for stopping by guys and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. Now today we're going to be looking at a creation that I've been teasing quite a bit recently, which is the Universal Flight Computer, also known as the Flight Computer version 3.15. Now I'm not going to be going into any depth on how to use this creation, I'm simply going to be talking about what it is, what it does, and a little bit on how it does it. So this here is the Universal Flight Computer itself. This is kind of everything that it is. Originally, the project started as a uh, continuation of the Helicore project. I'd been using the Helicore project to develop a number of helicopters. However, the complex flight controls were a little much for a lot of people, including myself at times. So I wanted to create a system that could automate a number of the things on it. This is what came about. Once I created the system, I realized the potential that it had, and eventually the project developed into a kind of a universal flight computer, like I've already called it. Something that you could attach to just about any creation and make it fly perfectly. And to give you an idea of what I mean, here are some of the projects and the prototypes I've been working on just to test out the system. Now, the oddball in the room here is over here, the Able light cargo ship. This was made with the V2 of the flight computer, which for all intents and purposes works the exact same, just doesn't have as much functionality. There's a few things missing on it. So I'm sorry about the lag right now. It's mostly this big guy and that truck there that are causing it. So I'm going to try and get through this as quickly as I can to get rid of those, and then we can talk a bit more in depth. Essentially what the system does is it looks at the creation's position with a gyro and the creation's elevation with a um, vertical sensor. So it takes the input from the gyro to correct the creation's tilt one of two ways. The first stage it has a little um, suspension glitch here which tries to do all the minute details. If for some reason the suspension glitch is not powerful enough it can then start to adjust the thrusters. The thrusters are mostly there to adjust for major weight shifts. Then the creation also detects if the creation is falling or rising. And based on that, it can adjust the thrusters accordingly. This is how the system adapts to weight changes. So with that being said, you can build just about anything. And as long as you put enough thrusters on it, it can fly. Not only can it fly, it can hover in place, and it's so stable while hovering you can walk around it. So I'm going to go ahead and get these two guys off of here. The frame rate should uh, level out because these are the two most complex things here currently. So with all of the other creations out of the way, let's look at these two designs. These are essentially just computers with thrusters attached to them to show off how it actually works and to give a simple flyer for just everyday use. So this is the one I've been using for most of the teasers. How it works essentially is you have one is for down, two is for up, three turns the entire system on, and there is a W, A, S, and D converter which does the basic thrust. So if I hit three, the system's going to turn on and it's going to detect that it's slightly tilted. So it's going to start firing engines to try and change that. You can see the back one there moving. It's also going to detect that it's slightly tilted in this axis and uh, fix that. Once the creation gets level and it detects that it's level, it will stay in place and leave the controls up to me. It will make some minor adjustments back and forth to keep it as level as it can, simply because the gyro is not 100% accurate. Let's see, and right about now it detects that it is level. So if I hit two, we will raise. Come on, raise. And what is happening is the system is learning this creation. Because a lot of the weight was suspended on the ground itself, it had to learn the weight of the creation using the vertical sensor. So basically what it's doing is it's detecting if the creation is falling, increase thrust to compensate if the creation is raising, decrease thrust, and through a sort of trial and error, the gyro can find the center of mass and the vertical sensor can find the creation's weight and adjust the thrust accordingly. 
And then from there, your buttons simply override the vertical sensor to go up or down. Whenever you stop pushing buttons, the vertical sensor kicks back in to get you into a hover. Um, and other than that, it flies all right. You have W, A, S, and D, which does what you'd expect it to to move the craft. Now, the W, A, S, and D is not controlled by the computer itself. It's simply by a converter. So that's something you do somewhat have to keep in mind is if the thrust is too high or too low, it can push the creation into the ground or pick it up. The computer will try and adjust for this over time, but it is not perfect. So this is a version over here with the thrusters in different locations to give an idea of how it is able to deal with different positions and different weights. So the same system, turn it on, lift up, give the computer a little bit of time to learn the weight and the center of mass of the vehicle. And eventually we should pick off and fly once again. As you can see, all three sets of thrusters are going at different angles and moving at different speeds based on the inputs that the computer is giving them. You can actually see the outputs right here. These outputs go to these controllers. These controllers then control the angle of the thrusters. This uses a pulse modulator. So the pulse is a half tick, essentially. So it's on half the time, it's off half the time. And what ends up happening is when the controller is turned on constantly, it increases thrust. When it's turned off, it decreases thrust. And when it's flashing, it's staying at a stable thrust amount. And these outputs are set for different thruster sections. You can have eight in total. Currently, this is considered back left. Or I should say back right if you're looking at the front of the creation. So this is back right, which is these two right here. This is considered left, which is this output. And these are considered front, which is that output. And over here, respectively, those up there are considered front. This is considered back right. This is considered back left. And depending on which section your thrusters are in, depends on which controller you hook it up to, which depends on how the computer controls that thr thruster. Or that thruster cluster. So then essentially what it does to adapt to weight is because it has sensors that detect the craft's vertical movement and it can detect the craft's weight through, a, like I said, a trial and error system. And the same thing with its center of mass with the gyro. It can adapt to weight changes. So whenever I do this, it's going to throw the craft center mass off and the craft's weight off, and it's going to try and adjust to that. And then we hit the ground because I was hovering really close to the ground. So let's get back up in the air. As long as I have enough thrust, I should be able to get this just about anywhere with just about as much weight as I want to. Let's get a little higher. And as you can see, we are starting to max out that thruster. So wait for the creation to stabilize. It has figured out how to uh, balance the weight with the thrust so we're not moving and we're completely level. We can walk around freely. Let's get something that's not metal because metal is going to change us quite a bit. Why are we rotating? Hmm. Odd. Anyway, it seems that we are rotating slightly. So as I place weight, the vertical thruster detects that we are falling slightly, so it increases the thrust to compensate, and the gyro detects that we are tilting slightly, so it increases the thrust to compensate. And that's essentially how it balances you. Now, since we are maxing this thruster almost, it's going to be a bit um, interesting. I'm also not quite sure why we are rotating. There shouldn't be any sort of uh, thrust, maybe from the gyro or from the suspension glitch here.
So hopefully this makes sense as to how it works. Um, I do have some projects in mind. This is already on the workshop, and I do know a few other people who are trying to use it. I will be doing a dedicated tutorial on how to hook it up, but this is kind of a uh, system looking at how it works, what it does, and somewhat of how it does it. So if you guys did enjoy this video, please leave a like. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoy the channel, enjoy what I'm doing, please subscribe. It helps out a lot. And right now, shares help the channel the most. So if you do want to help the channel, please share this episode with a friend. But thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time, peace.